What a worship. It was worth coming from the UK just to sit there for those 40 minutes and enjoy your worship and your praise. I'm excited. And I find myself very excited about the things of God. So it's a joy and it's a privilege to just come and meet with you. And I'm looking forward to spending time, especially over in the big tent, although I'm beginning to wonder whether I ought to just be, come and sit down here and just be blessed singing and worship and praising with you. Uh, I have a tremendous burden for the things that you've been talking about today and to see the freshness of your music and to see the excitement about it. I was wonderfully blessed, man, and I want to just thank you for that rich uh, moment just a few moments ago when it came from your very soul and the words and the music. And I think God has very much blessed. Now this morning, I don't know whether the word speaker is the correct word. I was just invited to just spend a little time talking about your your theme, Serve to Save and Save to Serve. And I would like to say right now, if I may, that I find this a very exciting theme. It's explosive, it's got power, it's got fantastic energy. That one word, saved, you know, behind it are the things that just thrill me. They thrill my life. They thrill me so much with you that I just want to meet the Savior that's behind those words. And no longer is it just a theory, a theology, a teaching from the Word of God, but it's a person, and it's the person, Jesus Christ, who is the passion of our lives and the passion of our mind and the passion of our hearts. And so behind that one word, saved, is all the energy of redemption, reconciliation, forgiveness, mercy, cleansing, renewal, hope, possibilities, meeting the Lord again, eternal life. It's just there. And that one word just thrills me. And then saved to serve. You know, for many of us, immediately we begin talking about serve. It doesn't have the potential, it doesn't have the energy, it doesn't have the magnificence, maybe, of the word saved. But Paul and the apostles, they put together a package in the New Testament where they wanted to show us that behind the word saved is all the power of heaven, but also behind the word saved is all the opportunity of heaven. And so, I'd just like to talk to you about a passage that Paul uh, referred to and talked about in the church, and it's a really stunning passage. It's a passage I go back to over and over again, and it's become one of my favorite in the New Testament. We find it in Ephesians chapter 3. And Paul there is talking about Christ, and he's talking about the person of Christ and the power and the magnificence of Christ. And as his sermon and as his talk starts building up, he just gets more and more excited. This man is reaching a peak in his concepts of God. And his pen is just going furiously now. And suddenly he comes to it. And in verse 14 of this passage, he says these words. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Then he says it. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Paul is not now talking about a theory about Jesus Christ. He's not talking about a knowledge of Jesus Christ. He isn't defending whether Christ is divine or whether he isn't divine, whether Christ had a beginning or whether he didn't have a beginning. He is now talking about Christ inside, in the mind, in the thinking, looking through the eyes of Christ, looking through as Christ would feel, the way Christ would act, the way Christ would talk, the way Christ would walk, the way that Christ just would be, Christ inside. And then he goes on building this idea up to this fantastic moment that you find now in verse 20. Now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Do you know what Paul's saying? When you have the serve factor, and when you have the saved to serve factor, and when you have the serve to save factor, 
inside. And Christ is there in our lives through the presence of the Holy Spirit. The immeasurability factor kicks in. The immeasurability that it is the power of God and the opportunities that God can do through our lives that you cannot even measure. And you can take the longest tape and it will always be bigger than the tape. But he even goes on and says that the immeasurability factor is so powerful in the Christian life that you cannot even imagine what God can do and what God will do. You know, Josh McDowell, you may have heard him of him. He's a campus crusade evangelist over the United States. And he's spoken for many, many years to literally millions of young people and students across America. I met him once and I heard him tell his story. And I suddenly realized this man has got the immeasurability factor. This powerful beyond what you can even imagine. He told us on this occasion, he said, when I grew up, I was in an out-of-sticks town, very small community, and my father was a drunkard, and my father used to beat my mother. In fact, it was so bad, I would come home from school, Josh said, and I'd come and I would see my father beating my mother, and I was so angry, I'd get hold of my drunken father and take him to the barn. And then I would actually bend him over the rail in the barn and I'd tie his hands to the lower rail with him over there so he couldn't move and I'd leave him there for several hours. I was so angry. Josh went on to say that he was left-handed. But at school, when he was at at school, the teacher said, you have to change and you have to become right-handed. And in school, it was awful. It was hell. He would be there writing with his left hand. The teacher would come and wrap him over the knuckles with a ruler. And you'd force him to write with his right hand. And then he, because of his drunken father, because of the school experience and other things that happened to him, he was looked upon in the community and despised. This family were an oddity. This family you didn't socialize with. This family were out of things. And Josh said, I developed a stutter. I couldn't speak. Everything I said, if I just said my name, I would say, and he just couldn't get it out. One day when he was a teenager, he went along to a Christian meeting. And the preacher was standing there and he was saying to the young people, give Jesus Christ your life. Give him your talents. Give him your abilities. And then the preacher said, come up to the front and give your abilities. And just give them to the Lord. And Josh stood up and he said, what abilities have I got? I can't speak straight. I'm nothing. I've got nothing to offer. He felt very low self-esteem. And suddenly he walked out of that building. He went out into the street. And in anger he swore at God. And he saw a can in the street. And he went and kicked the can. He walked on a little later and he decided, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go right up to that preacher man and I'm going to say, I've got nothing to offer, so what can you do for me? And Josh walked up to that preacher man and he stood at the front and he started to, I'm Josh, and he couldn't get the words out. And after a long time, and the preacher saying, it's all right, man, relax, relax, just, just, that's okay, you've come to the Lord. And suddenly Josh blurted out, I've not come to the Lord. I've got nothing to offer. I've got nothing, no talents. And Josh began to walk away. The preacher man simply said, Josh, stay here and give him yourself. And Josh looked at the preacher and he said, you mean just me? Yes, man, just you. You you, 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 really... Do you know, Josh gave himself to Christ that day. He went out and he lost his stutter and he has been preaching immeasurably, powerfully and wonderfully for the Lord for many years to thousands and millions of people. And when he stands in the pulpit and I've heard him and I've heard him talking and I've heard him getting excited and I've seen the passion and everything and there's never a moment stutter at all. It completely went. Immeasurability thinking. 
he discovered that you can have power by the indwelling Christ within, over and beyond anything that you can expect, beyond your wildest imagination. This is what saved to serve is all about as far as Christianity is concerned. It is not only the coming to Christ, but it's opening up for the life to have Christ live through us and do fantastic things. Can I share one? It's not as exciting as Josh's. You know, one day I said to my uh, colleague, he was going to get his Peugeot car, uh, just change the points, it's way back. You know, you had these uh, points you had to open and adjust. It's all electronic now. And uh, I said, you don't need to take that in, I'll do it. And I had no idea how complicated this thing was. You know, it had to be different than everybody else's. (laughs) And I I got the screwdriver out and I decided, now how on earth do you get these points out of the spring there and everything? And I fiddled around. And after a while, I got it free. But suddenly, because of the pressure of the spring on the shaft, the thing went, bing! Spring disappeared and bolt disappeared. And I searched everywhere. And the guy, my colleague, said, you know, I just said, it'll only take me 20 minutes and you can get off. He had an appointment. And I have the car back in half an hour. And it's way past this half an hour. And I'm looking for this bolt and I'm looking for this spring. And I cannot find it anywhere. Finally, I turned my back on the car. Don't ask me why. I just turned my back on the car. And I said to the Lord something like this. Lord, would you help me find that bolt and that spring? And would you do it because your pastor wants to go on his way working for you? I wasn't asking the Lord to do it for me. I was doing it because it would help the pastor go and do it on his work. And nothing. No spring. No bolt. I turned my back on the car again. There's something crazy about me. I don't know why I would turn my back on a car, but never mind. I turned my back on the car. And I simply said, Lord, would you help me... For my sake, find the bolt. I tell you, it's only a small thing. You wouldn't write this up on newspaper headlines. I was standing there and I saw exactly where the bolt was. I'm not kidding you. My back is turned against the car. I'm not looking at the car. But I saw in my mind the picture of exactly where the bolt was. It was on the transverse engine down below on a lip of uh, metal going along the back of the engine. Couldn't even see it looking at the car. And I went over and just began to reach down into the darkness, reached along the edge. And as I reached along the edge, I felt the movement and there was the bolt. The Lord had given me a picture of where the bolt was. I then turned again from the car and I said, oh, that's fantastic, but I need the spring. <laughs> And I tell you, I, I tell, I'm still thrilled to it now. I saw a picture in my mind. I'm not exaggerating. I saw in my mind with my back away uh, against the car. I saw that in the sh- driving shaft, sorry, the steering column, it had one of these UJs, you know. And I saw that UJ in my, in my mind. I saw the picture clearly and I saw the spring sitting right down the bottom of that shaft in that UJ. I went, I leant over the car, I had to get my feet up in the air nearly upside down and follow the shaft all the way down till I got to this UJ and when I got to the UJ, I gently put my finger into the gap. I couldn't see it, but I'd seen it in my mind. And I touched something that moved and there was the spring. <laughs> got the job done. My friends, listen, <laughs> I'm not here about bolts and springs. <laughs> it's great to have the bolt and the spring. But what it taught me was that the Lord actually was willing to work with me. In other words, the Lord had spoken to me. I couldn't invent those pictures. I couldn't work it out. The Lord through his spirit had actually done it. And to stand there in the garage and realize that the God of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit had come in a very personal way and taken time with me. It was absolutely fantastic. And for me, it is what immeasurability thinking is all about. There is nothing that God cannot do to those that enjoy the indwelling presence of Christ and the worship and the praise and allowing Christ to work through our minds and working through our hearts. I'm basically making something very simple this morning. 
I'm not trying to get theological. I'm not trying to get profound. I'm just telling you. I'm testifying. I'm witnessing to the thing I believe with a passion for those that open up their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. The immeasurability factor kicks in and it's that immeasurability factor is where the Holy Spirit can do things that we cannot even measure and he can also do things that we cannot even dream about. I'm an evangelist, so I'll have to put this punchline in. (laughs) The world is aching for immeasurability thinking Christians. I really mean it. I'm not talking about Christians that know how to worship and praise the Lord, and that's excellent and must be. But I'm talking about Christians that know the power of salvation and know the energy of serving. What I mean very simply is, when you're walking along the street and you see somebody walking to you, you're ready. You're ready to say or to speak, allow the Holy Spirit to move. When you're sitting by somebody in a plane, you're ready and willing to talk. You have the opportunities and you're always looking for this immeasurability factor so the Lord can explode his kingdom through you into the community so that Jesus can come and claim thousands for himself. And so I'm simply saying and concluding this morning with you, I'm excited, I'm thrilled about Jesus Christ, I'm thrilled about his ministry, I'm thrilled about his presence, but I'm thrilled also about the glorious opportunities that come. There is immeasurability thinking. God can do something greater and beyond anything that we experience and anything we've experienced in the past. And to this end, I offer you the power of your great theme for this week, saved to serve and served to save, to the glory and power of God. Amen. Hallelujah and praise his name.